Dear friends, welcome to the reflection of the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. The theme is God, Friend of the Poor. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, full of sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Preachers at the time of Jesus made frequent use of imagery with vivid descriptions of punishments, hoping that threats would deter people or comfort them. Jesus too made use of this kind of imagery he spoke of banquets, of rivers of fresh water, but also of flames and of gnashing of teeth. It would be naive to draw theological conclusions about hell, punishment, and eternal fire from them. What can we learn from the parable? We like to think that the very rich can live alongside the most wretched provided they do not steal, and provided that they give arms, that what people have earned belongs to them, and that nobody else can touch it. It is theirs to use as they see fit. They can squander it if they want to. Jesus does not accept this. In the parable, he speaks of a rich man who is condemned not because he was wicked, but simply because he was rich. Jesus wants us to realize that the existence of two classes, the rich and the poor, is against the plan of his Father. The things of this world are meant for all and must be shared. Those who have more must give to those who have nothing, so all can have something. All should be able to live lives worthy of human beings. Commenting on this parable, a bishop of the early church, St. Ambrose, used to say, When you give something to the poor, you are not giving him what is yours. You are just giving back to him what is his. Since the goods of this earth belong to all, and not just to the rich. The world certainly is not set up according to God's plan. 
25% of people use up 8% of all resources. As Christians, don't we feel in our hearts God's displeasure at such injustice? If we are poor, should we take what we need by force? No, violence never solves anything. It just makes things worse. Politicians and our Christian communities must denounce the injustices committed in their countries and the sufferings imposed on the poor. We must change our rich man's heart. If we are selfish, if we do not share the little we have with those who are poor, if we deprive our wife and children of essentials, just so we can satisfy your own whims. If we aspire to wealth above everything, how can we build a world found on the justice and equality that God wants? The expression, Moses and the prophets, meant at the time of Jesus or of Holy Scripture. What then is the proper foundation of our faith? Is it apparitions, revelations, and miracles? No, the only basis for a sound faith is the Word of God, the Word that the rich of all angels have failed to understand. Is the Word enough for us? Let us pray. Jesus, Divine Master, you teach us that the Father desired and still desires for the riches of this world to be used by all people equally and justly. May we share what we have with the less fortunate so that their lives too may be uplifted. Amen. Raise her than gold is the love.